President Trump is about to head to Camp David, where he will be spending the weekend monitoring the path of Hurricane Dorian. Advising the president on the storm will be the head of FEMA, who serves only in an acting capacity, and it's his first hurricane in the job. As CNN's Caitlin Collins reports, this all comes as one of the president's closest confidants is forced out. As Hurricane Dorian heads for Florida, President Trump is headed for Camp David. The storm looks like it could be a very, very big one indeed. That's where he'll monitor the Labor Day storm, but he'll do so without a permanent FEMA administrator or a confirmed Homeland Security secretary by his side. New CNN reporting revealing that three months into hurricane season, Trump's pick to head the disaster response agency, Jeff Byard, is still waiting to be confirmed by the Senate. Acting Administrator Pete Gaynor has been running FEMA in his place. And while he has a decade of experience in emergency management, Dorian will be his first hurricane in charge of the agency. We'll probably short uh, a few thousand uh, employees when it comes to a reserve. Gaynor recently told lawmakers the agency's full-time force is fully staffed. But those temporary employees who help during disasters like this one are understaffed. It has been a struggle. Another official by the president's side during a natural disaster is the Homeland Security Secretary. But in the Trump White House, that position is also acting. But I said I like acting. Gives me more flexibility. Trump may prefer that term in front of his advisor's titles, but experts warn it could be damaging in the long term, arguing that permanent staff provide administrations with stability. Today, Trump declared a state of emergency in Florida. But it really began to form and form big, and now it's looking like it could be an absolute monster. The president has multiple properties in the state, including his Mar-a-Lago resort in Palm Beach which is projected to be directly in the path of Dorian. All this coming amid other turbulence in the West Wing. After one of Trump's most trusted aides, Madeleine Westerhout, was forced out after she revealed, quote, intimate details about the White House during an off-the-record dinner with reporters. Her abrupt departure, coming while she was on a summer vacation, stunned her colleagues, who described her as a loyal aide with a lot of power. Yeah, Dana, those aides certainly were surprised to learn the news that Madeleine Westerhout was going to be pushed out of her role. She was seen as someone who had major power. She was essentially a gatekeeper to the president, a president who came to trust this aide even after it was reported that she had been in tears after he won on election night. But in the end, it was something she said that got her pushed out of this job. Caitlin, thank you so much for that reporting. And we're with our panel, which is actually a perfect split. We've got reporters on one side and former White House officials on another, so we can really break down what happened. Bill Crystal, I'll start with you uh, as somebody who worked in the White House and um, has, you know, understands, frankly, the game, that there are off-the-record conversations that happen. Um, what are your, what's your take on this? So there are off-the-record conversations, and especially when you're, uh, you know, at a summer White House or at Bedminster or whatever, a long weekend, mm -hmm. you're not with your family, the White House staff's there, you go out to dinner, it's all off the record. And a lot of people do that. I think the executive assistant to the president, maybe she's a little too close to do that. I mean, I think yeah. the communications director, Kellyanne Conway, would do that, the chief of staff. Having said that, someone was out to get her. That is, think of it, think of it. She had a conversation with a bunch of reporters. The reporters didn't tell Donald Trump what she said, presumably, and they presume, so far as we know, it remains off the record. Someone else found out from, in the White House, I suppose, that she'd had this uh, conversation. Maybe there was something else that got out that Trump was unhappy about, and they decided to go after her and blame her. So it does show a certain amount of backstabbing in the Trump White House, which I suppose <laughs> is not a, huge, not a huge headline. But for me also, the fact that they just fired her mm. and sort of what didn't deny her access to the White House that day. Mm. I, you know, there are people we didn't work out when I was in the White House. And you find them a job in an agency. They have a few months to look. They, 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 they work in some lower profile place for a while. There are ways to ease people out of the White House. There and they wanted to make an example. Bill, there aren't many soft landings in the Trump administration. <laughs> look, here's the other thing, though. I mean, obviously, proximity is power. Um, and I can remember going, like in Martha's Vineyard, going out to dinner with reporters and the person who was the president's aide saying, you know what, I'm not going to come because you have a few drinks and you're eating and you mm -hmm. know what, off the record has definitely slid a bit during this administration and you can't say anything that is so juicy from what I understand in the reporting 
she said something that somebody then talked to somebody else about, and you have to be so careful. Well, off the record, just to be, I mean, not to be Pollyanna, but off the record shouldn't slide. Off the record Correct. is off the record. Because we have off the record conversations to get better understandings and context, uh, context of the people we cover and the issues that we cover. Yeah, and I look, I think Bill's right. Someone was out to get her. I mean, I think whatever happened there, somebody used that morsel to then feed into this. I, I do think... I, I think this sort of stuff, until we know exactly what was said, and we, we may never know, but it's hard to judge, well, was it justified, was it not justified? The, the one thing I would say is I, I do think Donald Trump is someone who demands total fealty, mm -hmm. total loyalty, right? But he doesn't, it's not a two-way street with his aides, <laughs> right? It's he, You must be as loyal to him as possible, but he has no requirement to be loyal to you. I, I was sort of struck the same way Bill was. She was... She was, like, walking people up into Trump Tower, interviewing people. I mean, she has been with him since the beginning, since he got elected president. You would think maybe you would bring her in, have a conversation, much less, yeah. like, you know, you come here and all of a sudden your White House pass doesn't work anymore. Sungman, you cover the White House. You know her. You obviously know the dynamics. What are your thoughts? Well, I think it's difficult to um, underestimate her influence for, a, for an aide who is not a prominent aide and who has not yet reached the age of 30. She carried with her a great sense of power. You know, she's right outside uh, the president's office. I um, actually did a story earlier this year that talked about the president's tendencies uh, to call up senators at any given moment and for the senators to call back, um, to call, uh, call Trump at any given time. And one of the fascinating things that I picked up from my conversations with Republican senators is that they're told by the president to just call Matt. Madeline. Mm. So I have heard voicemails from senators with Madeline's voice saying, the president has called you. You can call back at any time. And she was really that access point, that gateway for so many, um, so many directly to the president. It speaks, I think, so much to his loyalty yeah. thing, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it is, it, it, people have compared it to organized crime. If you go against him, that's it. I mean, I actually compared but, it today in a piece I wrote to Succession, the HBO show, which is like, <laughs> outside of his, if you haven't seen it, you should, outside of his immediate family. Yeah. That's right. If you cross him, there is, no, in his mind, there is no coming back, no matter to someone's point, no matter how close you are. But don't you think they often do try to keep these people sort of loyal? I mean, so Keith sure. Schiller, Keith Schiller, who was the body right. man all those years, he's on a $15,000 a month contract with the RNC.